What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is my new series where I just screen record articles that I read that I find interesting. Uh, so this one I think it's pretty prevalent. This one is, can you tell if code was written by AI? Here's how to find out. Now, before we dive into it, uh, I just want to say as a manager of high performing software engineer, shout out to my team. Uh, a lot of people, like when I talk to people and you're like, hey, like what's the percentage? They would probably say something like 80-20 where they're like, oh, I write 80% code, 20% AI. No, I would, if I, I don't have metrics in front of me, but I would bet devs are like more like 60 to 90% AI and 10% like, is it, is it look good? Does it work? Kind of doing like a self-code review. Um, and for those of you who are not aware, like, how are people doing this? So there's a lot of different tools. So let's actually, he highlights some of them. But again, you guys know about ChatGBT. But let me go through some of the other popular ones. So Cursor is one of the more popular AI code editors. Um, if you guys don't know the history, this is a company where they forked or they made a copy of VS Code, the editor from Microsoft. And then they just kind of tied in AI features to it with the ability to ask questions and to highlight a block of code and you know you guys get it like using ai and it's grown <laughs> perplexity shopify stripe like all these companies are now using it i've had some of my devs use it some really like it um i i tried it for a bit and then i hopped off because then i switched over to uh github let me give you a new tab Um, I switched over to GitHub Copilot. Now, if you haven't heard of Copilot, this is Microsoft or GitHub cursor competitor. Now, again, it's built natively into VS Code. And what's cool about it is you can select the models. There is chat, edit, and agent mode. If you are vibe coding, like you don't know how to really code, or maybe you know how to code, but you're trying to do a lot with a little bit of time. Agent mode with like Claude Sonnet 4, honestly, you can build a lot of really cool things. And it's nice because it's like, I want to say Cursor and Copilot would be the ones I would recommend to people. Now, I know there's Windsurf. This one just got bought by OpenAI for something ridiculous, something billion dollars. And yeah, Y Combinator backed, a lot of people are using it. Um, it's the idea that it can write really, really good code in a conversational matter. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you're like me, you come from like enterprise, you probably use JetBrains. JetBrains has their AI. I honestly just use Copilot because I'm not paying 300 a month for all these services. They're promoting Juni as their AI for pair programming. I haven't played with this one, but this is their competitor. All right, so that's how people are vibe coding. Um, now, let's get into the article because he's talking about why this actually matters. Um, so look, in schools, teachers are noticing students turning in perfect code without being able to explain what it does. See, as a professional, I love this. Hey, you asked me to do something, I did it. How I did it, who, who effing cares? Because the reality, when you're like working, the how a lot of times is irrelevant as long as people see what you did and are happy with what you did. The problem that I have is you can't explain what it does. And that's probably going to be a true transition for a bit. I don't know the answer to it. But again, like you see here, it talks about the professor gave a take-home assignment. Once, yeah, submitted flawless Python code. Well, that's your problem. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but then in a follow-up interview, he said he couldn't explain a for loop. Like, this is fundamentals. This is basic stuff. Um, and I just don't know what's going to happen because AI is moving so fast that you're, you've heard so many people talk about, I've even talked about it, where it's like to know all of the core concepts to be a software engineer, I think it's going to change. But what it's going to change to, I don't know yet. Now, in job interviews, I think this one's funny because a lot of, a lot of companies be doing too much. They'll be giving you take-home assignments. So you do a take-home assignment, but now you can use AI to take it home. So when you get into office, they'll, like, modify it. You're like, oh, what? I don't know how to do that. Um, honestly, this is kind of what I've been wanting to do. We're not hiring at my current job, but I really kind of want to change the interview process because 
One, take homes really don't tell me anything anymore. Two, I really want to see how you're using AI. Like, I want to see if you're going to show me something new. Like, oh, actually, I use cursor, but oh, you know what I do? I do something like this. Um, I got this MCP server. And you're like, oh, what do you do with GitHub MCP? Oh, yeah, you didn't know? Like, I go here. And it's like, I want to see how you're using AI. So this whole notion of, oh, I don't want you to know I use AI. I mean, cap, like, people are using AI. You guys can see it in my toolbar. I have one, two, three AI tools saved <laughs> into my bookmark. Like, what, what, like, what are we talking about here? Uh, in security and open source. So let me just say, so this one is talking about open source projects, people are concerned about AI-generated code being merged with prop without proper testing. Um, to me, like, work with your QA team, work with your SDETs, work with your testing team. Like, like no code should be going to production without being tested. So I feel like that one's pretty easy. Um, I will say AI generates a function that works. Again, work on your test cases. But I do understand banking, healthcare, or infrastructure software. Those are things like we need to work. Like when you are, that's why Southwest is on some legacy ThinkPads from like 2008. And they're like, we upgraded to Windows Vista or whatever it is because we, when, you, when you're in the air, when a plane is flying, you need that shit to work. Like you just, it is what it is. So when it comes to banking and healthcare, they're usually five to 10 years behind. Like when I worked at an insurance slash banking company, I honestly remember thinking like we were on Java 8 the, at the time Java 17 came out and it was like, bro, Java 8 is so revolutionary. It wasn't really, but it was in comparison because they were just really far behind. All right. So how to spot AI generated code? The overly obvious comment. I would agree because come on. The function multiplies two numbers. I have seen some comments like this. I do think it's better to have it than not to have it. Um, one thing I'll just say, um, some people will see this and be like, this is stupid. Don't put that in. Um, put it in if it still makes sense. And the only reason I say that is if you're working internationally, I've worked with some developers from all over the world, contractors, full-time people, different time zones. And you sometimes forget like English, language barriers, <laughs> explanation. Like, again, the code should be self-documenting. Multiply, take in two parameters, multiply it. Um, but you'd be surprised. Like, again, this is, yeah, overly obvious. I wouldn't necessarily put this comment in. But I will say most of the time, the AI is getting better, and I have seen less of this. Now, generic naming patterns. Um, this one I think is hard for AI, and this is, to me, when I see this, this is like a lazy developer, um, and they usually try to abstract things or take, um, they try to like refactor the code to be a little bit more modular, have a function within a function type situation, and yeah, they'll be like, oh, process data, and you're like, ah, come on, like process user data or process something data, like let's be a little bit more specific, but like he says, it's, it's a bit vague, and that's usually a telltale sign. All right, now he's talking about missing real-world stuff. So let's say we're doing a file read here. All right, so you open a data.txt file. You want to read it. Looks fine, but the file doesn't exist. There's no exception handling. So, yeah, he's right. A lot of people will probably do, like, a try-catch. Um, I haven't really seen this problem, to be honest with you. Uh, again, I'm not doing a lot of, like, taking this type of file in doing something with it and then output it again. Like I feel like a lot of stuff I do is like web apps, mobile app focus. So we're just calling, we're getting all our data from APIs for the most part. But again, this is legit. Like I will, I haven't seen this one myself. So I would say valid. Like ideally AI is smart enough to understand. You should probably have a try catch. And I would say as you're getting better at prompt engineering, you should prompt your AI to be like, Hey, what are some edge cases we're not thinking about? Oh, what happens if you don't find a file? Yeah, maybe log something to the user. Uh, this one says super clean, but kind of off. Um, yeah, this is, I've seen this before. This is legit. Because this is really, yeah, you see right here. This is two lines of code. But he, one, two, three, four, five, six, without this page. That's six lines. This is when the definition of over-engineered. 
Now, again, I have seen people go into GitHub Copilot, go into agent mode, and ask them to make this function better. And it will more or less do something like this. The lazy devs like this take it and they're like, it works and they keep going. The people who I really appreciate is they like, double check the AI output to be like, I wouldn't necessarily do X, Y, or Z. So I think this is him just summarizing the article here. So we got um, students submitting AI written assignments, couldn't explain it, take home, but can't modify after the take home. And then this one's funny. A small dev team accepted AI generated code into production. That, to me, is not an AI problem. That is a team problem. Like, if your team is not testing, if you don't have processes, if you're skipping processes and code is going to prod, look, I've been on production calls. Like, stuff happens. But, like, this, to me, doesn't sound lazy. You're like, oh, I wrote it with AI. Cool. Looks good to me. Merged. Like, I, I want to be doing that. He talked about real tools that can help. And I honestly, I don't think any of these work. Or when they do work, they work for a bit. And then I feel like what happens is AI models are getting better and then they're avoiding them. And let me just show you, I actually have a script here. So I found this post, uh, which I'll do another video on. But the guy talks about, if you put this into your chat GBT settings, your context, you can tell it, write like a human, keep it professional, but conversational. Don't use dashes or buzzwords like streamlined, a voice sounding like a press release. And that will literally make your, your AI, your chat GPT responses sound more human. So to me, these work for a bit and then they stop working. So I don't, I don't really believe in any, any of the uh, detectors per se. Now, ooh, okay, try this. Can you guess who wrote? Um, I'm going to say a person wrote this. And I'm going to say AI wrote this because if I'm checking for number, first of all, I have the comment. Again, I kind of like to, but it's like, like I wouldn't do it that way. And when I say I like to, like, again, I feel like in my head, this is how a computer would think. But in reality, I'm like, dude, this is how I would do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're pretty much towards the end of the post here, guys, and you know, he, yeah, I think this is spot on. He, the, here's the tricky part. Most code today is human and AI combined. And like I said earlier, people I work with is about 80 to 90%. So what we should do, honestly, give it the time, man. Like, that's how I look at it. Like, AI is here to stay. If more people were familiar with how to use these AI tools, it's easier to spot AI trends and patterns and ideally we identify the good things and the bad things sooner rather than later. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you like it and you want me to see you do more like this, let me know in the comment section below. Tech out.